Last year I did loads of barbecuing. Okay. And now we've stopped because I basically just everything I burnt. It tastes the same. And it tastes the same. Yeah. And no flavour, no juice. And so I wouldn't even think about putting the sausages burnt, the chicken burnt. And oh, why do you think it ended up being burnt? You're just so scared of poisoning people. No. It's just I mean, I need you need the big <laughs> flames like you know. Yeah, okay, so we'll we'll start at the start, right? Start at the start, yeah. Chips. Okay. The, first of all, just if anyone doesn't have a barbecue already, yeah. what barbecue to pick? You were probably going from a gas barbecue, were you? A gas one, yeah. Which is the convenient option and yeah. there's certain benefits to gas and things like that. Okay. But if you talk to most chefs or this pit master, um, John, he would, they would always use a charcoal barbecue. Yeah. And that's where you get the flavour. The type of um, charcoal that you get is really important. So like, let's say you are spending a fortune on your beef or whatever to put on the barbecue. Yeah. It's organic and, you know, all that. Yeah. There's no point in putting it on um, charcoal that's full of chemicals. It's cooking your food and all the chemicals are going in. Like, what would be the point? So Yeah, it never even occurred to me that now. Yeah. That didn't occur to me either. It's one of the things that John said um, was to try and source good quality natural charcoal. And you can add things then to your, to your barbecue, like wood chips. Okay. which are really important again natural wood chips and that's where you get like the flavor like if you're going to a restaurant that specializes and there's so many big chefs around the world now who just cook with fire really yeah. famous chefs who just cook with fire okay that never occurred to me now you could throw in the few wood chips that's how you get that unbelievable that's how you get that flavor yeah, but then it's very important that you have three kind of levels of temperature in your barbecue you know whether it's gas or charcoal I feel like I should be taking notes book one anyway I'll be able to watch it back obviously yeah so so you kind of want to have a high heat a medium heat and a, and a low heat okay um, and obviously you start your meat off on the high heat to sear it in right and then you want to move it on if you're keeping it down there it's just going to burn like think slow cooking for barbecue sometimes it doesn't always have to be very speedy so a lot of gas barbecues will have a thermostat yeah but if you don't there is a test that you can do but be careful doing this right and um, it's called a hand test yeah so basically if you place your hand about 12 centimeters over your barbecue yeah uh, if you can hold it there for six to seven seconds before it starts to hurt okay that's a low heat okay two to three seconds is a medium heat and if your hand starts to hurt after one to two seconds that's it's like it, that's your high heat okay so you kind of want those three stages but how do you adjust that now if you've just got the stones because you're gonna load your barbecue in a mm. certain way where maybe they're over one side yeah you know and, and then you're gonna have room on the other side so your meat might go right over it originally okay so what you're, you're kind of saying on. is on the barbecue you, you move them yeah, from you're one good. side to the other exactly oh, yeah, so okay. it's the way you set up the fuel and you also do not want to cook on flames so you preheat your barbecue that's, right, that's exactly what I do all the time I want the flames booming up no, and I think I'm doing a good job what you actually want is the, the kind of embers you know you don't want flames Right. So you want to wait until you preheat your barbecue and you want it to be nice and hot. Yeah. Um, and that's when you put your meat on. So you don't want to cook in flames. Yeah. There's a lot of meats that are a bit drier, like turkey, chicken, pork. Yeah. You can all go quite dry in the barbecue. But if yeah. you're doing something like chicken or pork um, on the barbecue, brining and marinating are two really good things to do. There's two kind of different stages. Now, right. you've got to think ahead though, so you know, yeah, yeah. You, you need to do this a few days. So brining is different in that brining is a salt and water solution that right. you're putting your meat into. And then you can add whatever else you want to it, but it's salt and water. And you could add like bay leaf, chili, whatever kind of spices or herbs, depending on what you're doing. But the yeah. main thing is salt and water. Um, and you're putting your meat into that maybe for 12 hours. So what it's doing is, if if you're a chicken or whatever sitting in all this water, it's going to absorb some of that water. Yeah. And it means that, I mean, they say statistically it's about 15% juicier 
after brining. Okay. So it just, because you're going to, once you put uh, something on the barbecue, it's going to lose a lot of moisture. So you're kind of just getting extra moisture in to make up for the fact that it's going to lose that moisture once it hits the barbecue. So yeah. you, you put it, it in. It makes sense. Yeah. 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 And there's things like, you know, you could put it into beer. You could put it in pork. You know, you think apple juice, something like that. You could put it into cider to brine. So you would do that maybe for 12 hours. And then the next day you take that out and dry it off. Yeah. And then you put your marinade on. That's how you get chicken to be nice, what you're saying, this brining, as opposed the to brining. just end up being shit dry chicken. Yeah. yeah, you don't need to do it to beef because, you know, the chicken needs it, pork needs it. Yeah. And then with marinating then, you're going to get, you know, this is um, this chicken has been marinated in that lovely colour is smoked paprika. Yeah, put it up on the thing anyway. There, but yeah, smoked paprika. So you go on, explain that one now. So it's basically this was brined first and then it's covered in smoked paprika, cumin, salt, pepper, some lime juice. So you're kind of creating a rub yeah. and you're rubbing that in all over the chicken. Okay. And, um, so 12 hours doing that, I know the recipe is You know, you could actually, if, after you've brined it, you could just marinate it for a few hours. Yeah. You know, but if you can do it overnight, fantastic. Oh yeah, so when, you're, when your food is hitting the grill, you want mm. it to be nice and hot yeah. to sear it. Um, and you know, have you ever found that it kind of sticks to the grill? Yeah. So what you want to do, this is what um, John uh, Relihan recommended. Um, and to be careful, this is before you turn on the barbecue, so there's no heat involved, is to okay. get like a dishcloth or a towel yeah. and put some oil on it. And yeah. just do your uh, grill a little bit. Don't use too much oil because you don't want it to, to spill. To flame, yeah. okay, yeah, yeah. When you turn it on, just a little bit. Just wipe bit. it, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that's a good way to do it. And then when your meat hits it, it's the same as cooking something on the pan. You don't want to turn it straight away. You want to leave it. Um, for a few minutes and if you try and turn it and it's still sticking just leave it for a little like another minute and then try again and once it comes off easily that's mm. when you start turning it okay and, and that's the same with everything so you do it on both sides then you stick it to the, uh, to the, the, so the yeah. lower so you're not keeping it on the high heat all the time and a lid is very important on your barbecue as well and that allows control to keep the heat in yeah um, so, so you do your turning and you always keep it down do you to keep the temperature you yeah. know and especially if you're cooking something for a long time, like you'd be leaving your chicken or your leg of lamb in there with the, the lid down. Yeah. For quite a long time. Yes, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. And the chicken as well, you're going to be three hours like three, so, yeah. Are you, are you turning that chicken? How does it get cooked nicely on the. Because if, you, if your lid is down, it's not that different to an oven in terms of that's the temperature. And it'll be on. On the, it's yeah. not on a tray, it's directly, directly on that, on that jockey, it. yeah. Yeah, again, it's not in, it's not in flames. So you're just. It, it's really the flavour that you want to impart and that's kind of where the charcoal and the wood comes into it. Um, and before I got I got this in the butler's pantry actually, but I'm sure you can get it in other places. It's literally like instead of wood chips, it's a plank of wood and it's specifically for barbecuing. Okay. So you can put your piece of fish on the plank of wood and you put that into your barbecue. So that way, you know, even if you've got the gas barbecue, the wood's heating up and it's imparting all that smoky, lovely kind of flavours. I love these the tips. Like, yeah. Yeah. Um, and also, I forgot to mention about marinating. Another good thing about marinating is you're creating a barrier between your food and the grill, which is nice as well. So it kind of protects it a bit. Yeah. So I do okay. think, you know, marinating is kind of the way to go for, for barbecues. Yeah. But um, so, yeah, getting back to fish, it's fantastic on the barbecue. Um, you could use some tin foil if you wanted. You know, if you want, like, that's what you... Does that not kill the uh, smokiness or would you still get it? It still creates that lovely flavour, I okay. think. Like, even if you um, uh, did a... a potato or some corn in the cob in tinfoil on the barbecue it still has a different flavor yeah. than if you just did it in the oven so it the does, same yeah. would be for vegetables or for fish and um, so all you have to do for your fish if you've got a whole piece of fish and you maybe put some garlic or rosemary or something some yeah. oil make sure it's well oiled that it's dry first of all and then well oiled and well seasoned okay. before it hits your barbecue yeah um, and vegetables are another thing that people kind of forget about on the barbecue. Totally, yeah. You, you nearly think, what's the point, like, of vegetables? But it really doesn't have to be all about the meat. We mentioned yeah. corn there. Right. Corn on the cob is delicious on the barbecue. Yeah. Um, what I do is I tend to parboil it first. I mean, I, you don't have to do this, but I just find that it gives you a bit more control if you parboil certain things because then you're not, like, at the barbecue going, is it done? Is it done? Yeah. You kind of know that it doesn't need too much time, you know? That's smart. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so yeah. like corn in the cob is something that I would parboil and then wrap it in tin foil, add things like lime juice. Now you wrap it in tin foil, how do you get that, the burnt? Well, so, do you, know you don't you, get the burnt. You, what you could do is yeah. actually, and you can do this with some um, fruit as well. If you want those charred 
Mar- the chart bits, yeah. Do that first, just for a minute. Just okay, for a just roll it. It's like. kind of for the visual effect. Yeah, because like, it's all about the smoke. Yeah, just do it for a minute, but you don't have to do it. And then you could put it into your tin foil if you wanted, yeah. with some lime juice, garlic, some salt and pepper, some chili if you like, yeah, paprika. Yeah, okay. And then I tend to add some Parmesan cheese at the very end when it comes off. Yeah. And that's a nice way to do it. Yeah, a bit of lime maybe in there somewhere. Did you yeah, 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 a bit yeah. of lime juice is lovely. Yeah, yeah. Um, vegetables, anything that's got a little bit of um, meat to it, if you know what I mean, like no. aubergine is kind of a meaty vegetable. Right, yeah. But, you know, they're not going to like, it's not going to be flimsy, it's not going to fall through the grill. Yeah. Things like aubergine, um, squash, sweet okay. potato, potatoes. Potatoes. Potatoes, potatoes, yeah. Potatoes, potatoes, yeah, yeah. Are great on the barbecue. <laughs> yeah. Um, squash is really good. You can, yeah. Yeah. Like, and then one thing. I had squash soup once and I wasn't that keen on it. Oh, right, okay. Yeah. It's quite popular. And one, I used to hate peeling squash. I just hate peeling vegetables in general. Yeah. And then a chef advised me, he's like, why do you peel it? Just leave the skin on and it's actually lovely. And you just roast it or in this case, barbecue with the skin on. Same with potato. Yeah. yeah. You yeah, don't really was, peel things yeah. anymore. What's the point? Yeah. Um, and same with sweet potato. Don't bother. And plus you get more nutrition when you're not... It's nicer even. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Rustic. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Um, and you can actually put like a whole squash onto the barbecue and leave it cook for maybe 45 minutes until it's soft and then cut it into chunks. And um, we have a lovely recipe in the magazine that with some harissa paste, which you can either make yourself or much easier just to buy it. Yeah. Um, and some yogurt and some hazelnuts. And that's all mixed in with the barbecued squash. You're giving me so much here now. Go on, yeah. This okay. is great. No, it's great though. Yeah. Um, but that's lovely. And like, you don't have to forget about your vegetarians. Mushrooms as well are lovely. I can do mushrooms. Mushrooms, yeah. yeah. If you had those kind of flat cap mushrooms that are wide enough so you could put maybe some pesto on there, some cheese, then put them in the tin foil in the barbecue. It's all melty and gooey and lovely when it comes out. Coleslaw. Um, so rather than going for like the traditional kind of coleslaw with your barbecue, so you have your celeriac, which yeah. is that knobbly veg that's very strange looking, but yeah. very easy to get in your supermarket. Yeah. Um, and kohlrabi, which is a type of cabbage. Okay. Um, and you peel them both and just, you know, shred them basically to coleslaw and add in some apple, some lime, some chili, and the reason, and some fresh herbs, actually things like mint and coriander. Yeah. And the reason you want those flavors is because that's all very fresh and zingy and that cuts through. Sounds your, lovely. Yeah, your barbecue yeah. food. That's what you want like, on the side, like obviously you want your potatoes and things like that, like with mint or dill or whatever, but you want to have some fresh salads and sides to kind of lift everything a bit. Because yeah. Everything otherwise gets a bit samey and a bit heavy. I go home to my parents' house every Sunday for dinner, and yeah. if it is not raining, we have a barbecue. And who is at the helm of that barbecue? My father. And does he know what he's doing now, or is he doing what I would do? I am not going to answer that question. Because I'll get in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> so he does what I do, more I, than likely. I live for the sides. Of you live for the sides. Yeah. But now he should be watching this now, is what you were saying. Actually, in in, you in know a roundabout way. This. He's not online, it's fine. No, is things he? end up a little bit blacker than I would like. Yeah. But you know what? I can't complain if I'm not the cook. Well, you, you can complain to me. And, me. and desserts, actually. You Go don't on. have to finish with your mains. You can, if you've got the barbecue on, it's yeah. hot, you might as well. Finish off. Go on. Fruit is so good on the barbecue. Go on. You could stick on some bananas. Do the kids like banana splits, ice cream? Do they yeah, like the but I mean, they don't like bananas. Do they I, not? I don't, I'm going to make one because myself and Noodle were only talking about a banana split there last night. Yeah, well, actually. you could actually put the whole bananas yeah. on the barbecue. With the skin on? With the skin on. Okay. And they'll go kind of black, which is what you want. But then when you peel them, obviously, they're perfect on the inside. But yeah. like barbecued, mushy, lovely some toffee sauce, caramel sauce, some ice cream, maybe crumble on some nuts or texture. Unbelievable. Or yeah, like yeah. shortbread biscuits, crumble. You just want a bit of texture there with all the kind of soft yeah. flavors. And in this issue, actually, the chef did some lovely stone fruits, so things like plums, nectarines, peaches that are all in season this time of year. They're going to hold their own on the barbecue, as in they're not going to disintegrate. Yeah. So if you cut them in half, and we were talking about getting those charred marks, yeah. You want to put them on the barbecue to get those lovely lines. You're not putting those in the hot area of the barbecue now, are you? Um, just to get those lines. Just to get the lines, okay. Just to get the lines. But, I mean, this will be at the end of your barbecue. It doesn't need to be roasting hot. Fine. Um, but you can get those charred lines on your on your fruit. And then, if you wanted, you could put them into tin foil and actually leave them then to cook in the medium heat in your barbecue. You could put something... Um, so, this, in this issue, we have, like, a bourbon... Um, caramel sauce you could just have a regular caramel sauce 
um, with some cream or before we wow. did um, some mascarpone mixed with creme fraiche and you so if you sprinkle like I often just get peaches and sprinkle them with some sugar yeah. and cook them in the oven or your barbecue you could put some mascarpone and creme fraiche on top and it will all kind of melt in the tin foil and become really yeah creamy. yeah yeah so yeah. simple for them to be done if your dad watches this he is going to back away from the barbecue <laughs> now I would say he would now I'd be backing away in charge is the problem you don't really want